Welcome to our deep dive into the strange and fascinating history of water-powered vehicles. For over a century, inventors and dreamers have tried to harness the power of water to fuel our cars, boats, and even planes. Today, we'll explore the most notable attempts, the inventors behind them, and some of the mysterious circumstances surrounding their lives. Our journey begins in the early 1900s with a man named Charles Garrett. In 1935, Garrett claimed to have invented a car that ran on water. He demonstrated his invention to the press, showing how his engine could break down water into hydrogen and oxygen, using the hydrogen as fuel. Unfortunately, despite the initial excitement, Garrett's invention never made it to mass production. Electrolysis requires a significant amount of energy to break the bonds in water molecules. This energy input was one of the main technical difficulties Garrett faced. Additionally, there were rumors and whispers about the oil industry involvement in keeping his innovation under wraps. The oil industry had a lot to lose if a viable alternative fuel source like water became widespread. To understand this better, let's delve a bit deeper into the science behind electrolysis. In electrolysis, an electric current is passed through water, causing the water molecules to split into hydrogen and oxygen. This process occurs in an electrolyzer, which consists of two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. When electricity is applied, water molecules at the anode lose electrons and form oxygen gas and positively charged hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions move to the cathode, where they gain electrons and form hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas can then be used as fuel. However, the efficiency of this process is a major challenge, as it requires a substantial amount of electricity, often more than what can be economically viable for widespread use. Next. We have the story of Stanley Meyer, who in the late 1980s claimed to have developed a water fuel cell that could power a car. Meyer's invention supposedly split water into hydrogen and oxygen efficiently, allowing the car to run on water alone. Meyer's demonstrations were quite dramatic. He showcased his water-powered dune buggy, capturing the imagination of many. Meyer's water fuel cell worked on the principle of using high-frequency electrolysis to split water molecules, which he claimed was much more efficient than traditional electrolysis. High-frequency electrolysis involves using high-frequency electrical signals to break down water molecules more efficiently. Meyer's invention supposedly split water into hydrogen and oxygen efficiently, allowing the car to run on water alone. However, Meyer's work attracted a lot of attention, but it also brought scrutiny and skepticism. He was taken to court and accused of fraud, but the most mysterious part of his story is his untimely death. In 1998, Meyer suddenly collapsed and died while dining at a restaurant. Some believe he was poisoned to stop his revolutionary technology. There are various theories about what really happened to Meyer. Some believe that his technology was so disruptive that powerful interests, possibly in the oil industry, conspired to suppress it. Others think that Meyer may have overestimated his invention's capabilities, leading to legal troubles and financial issues. Regardless, Meyer remains a controversial and enigmatic figure in the history of alternative fuels. Another intriguing figure is Yol Brown, an inventor from Bulgaria who created Brown's gas, a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen produced by electrolysis. Brown claimed his gas could be used as an efficient fuel for engines. Brown's gas, also known as HHO or oxyhydrogen, can be produced through a special type of electrolyzer. Brown demonstrated various applications of his gas, including welding and as a fuel for internal combustion engines. Brown's gas can be used in welding due to its high temperature and clean flame. When used as a fuel, it produces water vapor as a byproduct, making it an environmentally friendly option. Despite its potential, Brown's gas never achieved mainstream success. The reasons are unclear, but like many others, Brown faced skepticism and barriers that prevented widespread adoption. One of the key advantages of Brown's gas is its ability to burn at a high temperature while producing minimal pollutants. This makes it an attractive option for industries looking to reduce their environmental impact. However, the technology requires precise control and safety measures, which may have hindered its adoption. Moreover, the lack of large-scale industrial support and investment likely played a role in its limited success. Even in the 21st century, the quest for water-powered vehicles continues. In 2011, a Japanese company, Genepax, showcased a car that could purportedly run on water. 
their water-powered car used a special membrane to extract hydrogen from water to power the vehicle. Genepax's technology involved a fuel cell system that extracted hydrogen from water using a proprietary membrane electrode assembly. This assembly was said to be more efficient and required less energy compared to traditional methods. The membrane electrode assembly in Genepax's system was designed to enhance the efficiency of hydrogen production. By using advanced materials and innovative design, the company aimed to create a viable alternative to conventional fuel cells. However, despite their promising technology, Genepax eventually closed down. Citing financial difficulties, critics argued that their technology was not as efficient as claimed, while conspiracy theorists suggested darker reasons for their closure. The closure of Genepax highlights the difficulties faced by companies attempting to bring revolutionary technologies to market. Financial constraints, technical challenges, and market competition are significant hurdles. Additionally, the energy required to produce hydrogen from water remains a critical issue, while advances in material science and engineering continue to improve efficiency, achieving economic viability remains a complex and ongoing challenge. So, why haven't we seen water-powered vehicles on the roads today? The answer lies in a complex mix of technological challenges, economic interests, and possibly hidden agendas. Water-powered engines require significant energy to break down water molecules, making them less efficient compared to traditional fuels and modern electric vehicles. Moreover, the dominant fossil fuel industry has a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. The idea that inventors of water-powered engines have died under mysterious circumstances feeds into a larger narrative of suppression and conspiracy. The energy landscape is heavily influenced by powerful stakeholders, including governments, corporations, and financial institutions. These entities have significant investments in existing energy infrastructures, such as oil and natural gas. The transition to alternative fuels requires substantial changes in technology, infrastructure, and market dynamics. While innovations like electric vehicles are gaining traction, water-powered vehicles face additional hurdles due to the high energy costs associated with hydrogen production. With the dream of water-powered vehicles lives on, inspiring a new generation of innovators. As technology advances, who knows what the future holds? Perhaps one day, we'll see a breakthrough that finally brings this vision to life. Until then, we can only admire the ingenuity and persistence of those who dared to dream of a cleaner, water-powered world. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the strange history of water-powered vehicles. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more fascinating stories from the world of innovation. See you next time.